Hello YouTube friends, this is Richard, founder of ShortTermRentalSecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. Welcome back to this week's question and answer session. As always, if you have questions that you'd like to see answered here, go ahead and leave comments in the section below and we'll go ahead and address them. Let's get started. I want to know how much money you put aside for handyman or repair costs. I know they have a security deposit and all, but what if it potentially doesn't cover the damage? Thanks in advance. So I think this is a great question. I think that the real question here is how do you pay for repairs and maintenance because the question about security deposit is really related to tenant damage. So we'll talk about that in a second. But I think the real interesting question here for the average Airbnb host is, okay, I have this home. How do I maintain it? How do I pay for that? And the easiest thing to do is to set aside as much as you possibly can. I recommend at least 10% and better is 15% or more. And put that aside in a savings account, just like you take money from your income currently and pay for taxes in advance, go ahead and set it aside, open up a savings account. And so if you get $100 in in rental income after the Airbnb fees, after the cleaning fees, after you pay everything of that money, just like you're going to pay some percentage in taxes, take at least 10%. Ideally 15% and put that aside so that when you have a problem like a roof needs to be repaired or a plumbing disaster, something like that, you have money there to handle it in an ordinary course of business. Turning to the question about security deposit, recognize that the security deposit is really only for guests damage. So if somebody burns your, a hole in your couch, somebody opens the door you know, of the microwave too hard and rips it off. That's what the security deposit is there for. It's for guest damage only. Uh, I like the video tips, but I would never directly ask for five stars. It's likely to make the guests feel uncomfortable. I agree with everything else though. And that's what's kind of cool about this channel and sort of being out there public. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I completely respect uh, this viewer's opinion. However, I'm going to respectfully disagree with their opinion. The point in asking for a five-star review when done properly is to make the guest feel like their voice is heard, their opinion counts, that you're bending over backwards to accommodate them, to make sure that they feel welcome and that you're you know, filled with interest in making their stay great. And in order to ensure that, you're aware that there's a rating system and five stars is sort of like the upper mark of uh, your expectations and you're trying to deliver five-star experience. Now, if I recorded the message and it didn't resonate with any of the viewers as to like how I go about asking for it, that's okay. You, it's not a prescription. You don't have to follow it line by line. Uh, but figure out your own script. Figure out a way that you feel comfortable asking for the five-star review. The key thing for me and the videos that I've recorded in the past is for many guests, like a three-star review might be great. We get far more comments and questions on our Facebook group and on the YouTube channel about I don't understand what happened here. The guest was thrilled. They absolutely loved it. They left me a tip. They said such nice things to me. We had a great rapport. Everything was wonderful. And I'm so disappointed. They left me a four-star review. Well, that's why we ask for a five-star review because for that guest, that four-star review might be the highest echelon of like satisfaction. They're thrilled. They love it. It's the best thing that's ever happened to them. But five stars would be like you gave them a million dollars to stay in your place. And since you didn't do that, it's four stars. And so that's why I encourage everybody to figure out a way, figure out your own language, figure out your own script, that you can tactfully ask for a five-star review, suggesting to them that all you care about is their happiness, their well-being, their health, their safety, their comfort, their hospitality is like first and paramount. And in return, you're working really hard for that five-star review. All right, so this, <laughs> this is an interesting question. It reminds me of... Um, a challenging time. And the question is, how did you solve the issue with this challenging lady? What this viewer is referring to is I was in the middle of filming a video when my phone rang and Charles just kept the film rolling. I, I, instead of just complaining, I, I don't want to do that. I, just, I can tell you right now that my friends, when they arrive tomorrow, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think we're going to be comfortable here and I want to figure out a solution that's going to be okay for you and okay for me. They were just like really upset and just wanted to get out and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so the question is, how did I solve it? So here was the resolution. Uh, I think this person was new to Airbnb. Perhaps it didn't meet with their expectations. I happen to think that they read the uh, listing quickly and incorrectly and not thoroughly because they were complaining about the fact that there's only two beds and not three, where it's pretty clear that there's two beds and a fold-out couch. Um, and I think, you know, some people you just can't please. I've made videos about that in the past. So the way that I try and handle this is I don't take it personally. I get my ego out of the way. I don't try and explain to them why they're wrong and I'm right. I just very simply get out of the way. And I'm willing to take the short-term impact of like loss of revenue for peace of mind, 
sustainability that I can keep doing this time and time again. And it's, you know, it's a personal like affront. You feel like you've been uh, uh, insulted and offended. Try and get past that and just sort of look at the deal. And if you've ever been in a situation where you've been uncomfortable or you don't like something, it's really hard for somebody to convince you that you're wrong. You, you can't. So what I basically did was just say, okay, this isn't a good fit. I'm really sorry that you feel this way. Many others haven't, but if that's the way you feel, let's make you happy. You can exit. Uh, she stayed for one night, so we charged her for the one night plus the cleaning fee, which she was happy to do. And then she went and stayed you know, at some other hotel. The basic premise is, this was just a bad fit. Didn't work for you. It didn't work for me. However, we've come to a resolution where we have a happy ending. You're happy to pay for one night. I'm happy to accept the payment for the one night plus the cleaning fee. Those are my costs. Going forward, I'll take the loss. You'll be in your hotel. Everybody wins. So why don't we leave it that way? Because you too have an Airbnb review and a profile that you may want to stay at other Airbnbs. And I just think it's best if we keep this between us. Something like that. Again, you can't come right out and say, I'll give you your money back if you give me a good review. It's illegal on the Airbnb terms and conditions to offer to refund the money in exchange for like a positive review. It's also illegal to offer to refund the money in exchange for no review. Um, and this is where you have to use your skills and negotiation and human you know, interpersonal skills to try and get to a common ground. This just wasn't meant to be. It didn't really work out for either of us. Why don't we communicate directly between us and let's leave it out of the public eye? Something like that. I can't tell you how to do it, but you'll figure out how to do it yourself. But it's really important if you're in this situation to make sure that you don't give them the money back and forget to talk about this. And then next thing you know, you get a one-star review and awful you know, feedback like the place was awful. You don't need that. Give them the money back and move on with your life. All right, this person lives off the beaten path and during peak seasons they have 80% uh, occupancy. However, most people are searching for one night in our area and adding a cleaning fee to the listing will just bump up the nightly cost. What would you do in our situation or do you think cleaning fees may not be right for them? And I've filmed videos about this in the past, but to address this specifically, I think a cleaning fee is right for everyone. To the extent that you are cleaning between guests, and you better be, then you're paying somebody or you should be paying yourself. It's unfair and unjust and should never be contemplated to just clean for free. Are you also cooking the meals for free? I mean, no, the answer is no, right? You're providing lodging and after lodging, they need to come and clean. Whether you do it yourself or somebody else, there's some fee involved with that. So I guess the two choices that you have are bump up your nightly rate, which may make you not competitive with the rest of the neighborhood and you get fewer bookings to cover your cleaning, or keep your nightly rate where it is and add a cleaning fee on top of it. Um, so now you're competitive with everyone else and you're paying to get your place clean. I think that's completely fair. What that amount is, I don't know how big your place is or you know, what labor costs in that area, but just to give everybody an expectation, Airbnb has come out with a proposal that people that are cleaning all of our homes should be paid at least $25 per hour if they're not employees or $15 an hour if they are employees and have other benefits. I think it all depends on where you live. For instance, $25 an hour in New York City is one thing. $25 in the middle of you know, America uh, is a different thing. So you'll have to figure out what the right amount is that you pay and then what you charge, but I definitely think you should be charging a cleaning fee. Is there any advantage in teaming up with your direct Airbnb competitors in your neighborhood? I can see the listings in my area that offer the same number of beds as my listing. Is there any way we can have a synergistic partnership? You know, the only thing that I would say about that that I see a real benefit to is for all of you to say like have a meetup or a group where you elevate the hosting standards and maybe to the extent that you ever have a problem like a double booking or something, you can reach out to them and, and ask for their help or assistance. You can send business their way. Uh, but as far as like collusion and prices or availability or anything like that, I don't recommend it. I don't see any benefit. Those are sort of like, you know, gray tactics at, at best and illegal at worst. But I do think knowing who is doing this, building a community, elevating the standards, that's basically why we have this YouTube channel, right? Instead of like me keeping my best tips and secrets to myself, I'd rather share them with everybody, uh, be a leader in the community, be a leader in my area, elevate the hosting standards, have more guests stay in Airbnbs, and have Airbnb be more successful. And if I can contribute to that, I win in a small way, but I win. And so to the extent that you can do that within your immediate vicinity, uh, and, and collaborate and cooperate with your direct competition, 
I think that that's going to elevate the uh, entire community. So do that. All right, and that's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed the Q&A session. I would really encourage you to leave comments with your questions below. And even if you don't have a question, let us know whether these are helpful, whether you like the Q&A segment, what we could do better. Again, we're all feedback driven and we want to improve. So let us know what's working for you, what's not working, any advice you have, we're all ears. If you think this has been helpful, please go ahead and share it. If you've liked the video, do us a favor and like the video. And most importantly, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay in constant contact with us as we release more updates with the explicit goal to put more money in your pockets. Until then, happy hosting. Have a great day.